217,000 followers on Instagram, 72,000 followers on YouTube, over 14 million views on YouTube, 1.6 million followers on TikTok, and over 45 million likes. There's no way to count the views. I don't have a way to count the views on on TikTok. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so I just shared this recipe that I thought was cool and it blew up. I think it's sitting at like 5 million views. That took me from like 10K to 80K and I'm like, oh shit, like this is dope. And people are like, can you make this like Nuka Cola? Can you make Nuka Quantum? Can you make this, this and that? And so I like started looking up recipes and there were none. I'm like, if I, if I make these recipes, I'll be the first one. And so that's what I did and people loved it. Welcome to the DV Podcast, where we bring on inspiring and entertaining guests from all walks of life. On today's episode, we have Jason Puckley, also known as the Sin City Bartender. This guy has skyrocketed his social media profiles with over 1.5 million followers on TikTok, hundreds of thousands between Instagram and YouTube, and he's really mastered the art of social media content creation. So enjoy, take notes, and let's dive in. So dude, I, I wanna know, Who's Jason? Are you Sin City bartender Jason Puckley? Like what? That's me. What's <laughs> who, who is that guy? I'm just the dude who is such a nerd, and it has actually turned out to be making money because of you. <laughs> so as like as great as all my knowledge of video games and all the pop culture references, it's kind of nothing if you don't want to share any of it. So, what well, do what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? So do you got? Uh, I have really had to write these down. I couldn't remember. 217,000 followers on Instagram, 72,000 followers on YouTube, over 14 million views on YouTube, 1.6 million followers on TikTok, and over 45 million likes. There's no way to count the views. I don't have a way to count the views on, on TikTok, <laughs> write but them all down. <laughs> probably, probably t- over 200 million views on TikTok or more. Yeah. So I, what I actually started doing sometime last year, or the year before, I started using Sin City Bartender as a hashtag on all my videos. Mm. And before uh, you post a video when you're selecting hashtags, you can see how many views that hashtag has. And assuming that that is 99% of my videos, no one's using the Sin City Bartender hashtag. I think I'm at like 250 million or 300. Dang, dude. Since I started it, too. So you're you're a viral sensation. Yeah, that's what they say. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, dude, what you think the future of TikTok looks like? Are they going to, is it going to be banned? Um, I, so it's, it's so weird right now. I would be okay if they banned TikTok. If Instagram and Facebook hadn't pulled their creator fund away because they are so confident that it will get banned because mm. they've been lobbying pretty hard behind the scenes to make sure it does happen because they're, they're losing out. Like at the end of the day, they are not able to compete with it. So to get it banned is great for them, but it's not really good for creators because they're going to lose out on a lot of money. So the TikTok creator or uh, Instagram creator fund <clears throat> is, is basically they give you an, a lot of the amount of money that you can get in a month depending on how many yeah. views you get. So it's a little different from YouTube because they share the money they make like every month. I don't know whatever YouTube pulls in based on what percent of views you had of that total, that's what you get paid out. And Instagram, it's more of if you get this many views, this is what you'll make. Mm. Now I know that they throttle it. They say like your first views will get more. Yeah. But for me, every month, the, the most I could earn over the last, I've got it, I've had it every month for probably eight months. The most I could earn was 1200 bucks. How much was yours at? <sighs> well, I got really upset. They took it away in January. And my page collectively got about eight million views, and I'm like, wow, that's uh. In, in January? Yeah, in just January. What was your What was your cap though? Uh, before Dude, that, I never. They would take it away anytime I hit 600. I would get kicked out of the fund. Every 600 dollars? Yeah. Oh wow! So they would like get, let you earn, and then they'd be like, oh, you're earning like, too oh, much. You know what? This your content um, isn't original. <laughs> That's what they tell me. And they said I was stealing it from somewhere without adding enough value to it. And I appealed it. And they're like, our engineers are working really hard on this. And I'm like, thanks. And then, <laughs> and then they said the fund's not coming back. so Or they're, pa- they're pausing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating, especially a lot of people that like the, that 500 bucks, four or 500 yeah. bucks like, is like <laughs> literally the make or break between being able to do this as a full-time thing or not. Well, especially they were paying out so much too that I'm sure there were some creators that were, that was probably their only source of income for a minute because you almost, 
Like if I would have been able to rely on it, I wouldn't have needed any brand deals. I would have just needed Instagram. Mm. Yeah. So what is the, um, what was the con- the con- concept of, let me make like cocktails, but make them with like video game inspired stuff and pop culture. Where did that even come from? Well, so obviously, you know, I'm a huge nerd, but during COVID, I was making these drinks. Just you hear that, ladies? Them. He's a huge nerd. <laughs> <laughs> during COVID, you knew we, we stocked up on all those videos for that road trip that never happened. And so I had all this content. I'm like, these are cool, but everyone's posting cool drinks right now. Like, what's going to set it apart? So I started looking at video game drinks because who doesn't fucking love video games? <laughs> and so I found this Fallout drink on a website called The Drunken Moogle, um, which they have basically kickstarted my career. I actually, like, reached out... Uh, to the guy who like formerly ran the blog, I don't think they've posted since like 2018 or something. But I was like, dude, you kind of like made my career. But he, he never replied. <laughs> <laughs> but so I just shared this recipe that I thought was cool, and it blew up. I think it's sitting at like five million views. That took me from like 10k to 80k, and I'm like, oh shit, like this is dope. And people are like, can you make this like Nuka Cola? Can you make Nuka Quantum? Can you make this, this, and that? And so I like started looking at recipes, and there were none. I'm like. If I, if I make these recipes, I'll be the first one. And so that's what I did. And people loved it. So mm, interesting. So you actually listen to your audience. Yeah, I listened to my audience. They honestly, TikTok at that time was introducing so many new features. They just started doing the reply to reply to a comment with videos. And people loved that. They'd be like, oh, make this. I'd reply to their video mm. or reply to their video with a <laughs> reply to their comment with a video. And yeah. That's that's probably what really kicked it off was definitely listening to the viewers and just being the only one that was doing it. Kind of a lesson I'm I'm like just mentally personally getting from that is like when platforms release new features, use them. Yeah, you have to use them. Even if you don't like them, you have to use them, Um, especially TikTok really. You know, they have come out and said that they heat accounts. They will heat your account if you're. What does that mean? Um, so they're essentially just boosting your video to get more views without you paying or without it being on the record. Like, yeah. So they came out and said that they heat videos. I don't, I I still don't fully understand. So it's fake views? No, but like, so let's say, I don't know, whenever your content was coming to the end of its viral cycle, nobody really knows why, right? It just stops getting pushed. It's not getting as many views. It's not retaining the audience. When your video is being heated, it's okay that it's not retaining that audience. It's still going to be pushed to more people. So basically they select videos that they'll just show to people anyways. Yeah. So if your account's in, if your account is in good standing, you're going to keep getting views no matter. I mean, you know, if you're, it's a terrible video, that's, that's not going to happen. But if it's a solid video, it's just going to keep going regardless of the bad feedback it gets. Mm, interesting. Speaking of bad feedback, you you seem like a guy that that <laughs> loves to troll your trolls. I love it. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> I always I'm always going back and forth in the comments with people, and then they'll be like, uh, occasionally like people come back and they're like, oh, you're actually like like they'll ask another question, and I'll reply in a totally different way. And I'm like, oh, you're so nice. You're mean the other day, and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like, I don't know. Did he say something stupid? And they're like, kind of. And I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what are you like? Aren't you scared someone's going to show up with at your house with like a pickaxe? And I'm, just, I'm waiting for the day. I always say that no one has ever kicked my ass. It, it's got to happen eventually. It's right? going to be a 12 year old from TikTok. That's <laughs> like, dude, you were mean to me in the comments. I, I'm waiting for the day. I really am. <laughs> so to have that many over 250, I mean, 250 million tracked views. You probably had more before that. So 250, 300 million views. You're posting a lot. What's mm-hmm. your cadence look like right now? How often? Um, I still post two videos every day. Across all platforms? Yep. At least. Okay. If I can't, like sometimes if, like yesterday, I posted an additional video of my cat. So <laughs> I posted three. <laughs> and and that one probably didn't work so well. That was the best one, <laughs> unfortunately. Because everyone is an expert on social media. Um, so my cat, love my cat, named after a Zelda character, Din. Um, he, he was panting because he's a super hyper ginger cat and everyone's like, oh my gosh, he's not okay. He has anxiety, this, this, and that. And I'm like, he's just tired because he was jumping around like a maniac. Oh, so they were mad at you. They're like, yeah, they're mad at me. Animal cruelty. Yeah. I probably have PETA on the way. (laughs) Uh, You're not taking care of it. You should take him to a vet. (laughs) Like, 
<laughs> it's wild. So two posts per day. What does the workflow look like to create that much content? That's what, 14 posts per week? Yeah. Um, and so on Instagram and Facebook, I also post a photo with recipe cards. Mm. Um, so that's three posts a day on those socials. Um, essentially, like a day like today, I was actually kind of bored. Um, I just went and started filming some Mario drinks. And usually I can knock out about, I want to say, so I post every day that I post, it's just one piece of content, if that makes sense, split into three video or split into two or three uh, different posts. Um, so if it's a photo, it's a photo of the drink, sharing how to make it. Later is a video of how to make it. And later on is another video of how to make that drink non-alcoholic. So in a day when I'm recording, I can record probably 30 to 40 videos, but wow, it's only 15 to 20 unique pieces of content, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm working hard, but I'm working smarter. <laughs> how, do, how do you do the, so the workflow from uh, idea to creating the content, to shooting it, to editing it, to posting it, like take me through that whole process. Ooh. So I am a planner. Like I plan super far in advance. So all my drinks are planned until Christmas at the moment. Next Christmas? (laughs) Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. That's amazing. What I kind of did was looked for big releases coming through the Dude, that's like eight months out. Yeah. Nine months out. And I could keep going. I just, you know, I don't need to. I need to (laughs) to relax. (laughs) Um, But so essentially what I do is I look at all the big releases and big video games, big movies, big TV shows. Anything that's going to come out, I want to cover it because that's what people are going to be talking about. So like I was saying, Mario's coming out, or I was making Mario drinks. The Mario movie comes out on April 5th. So I'm going to have five drinks to go before and after the movie because there's people are going to be talking about it. Chris Pratt is kind of a hot uh, topic at the moment. People uh, love to He's, he's kind of hot, period. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good looking man. Yeah. Uh, I'm stoked to see the movie, dude. I don't, I think I don't, be I'm not stoked about movies, but. Yeah. It's going to be cool. And plus, they just uh, opened the Super Mario World and Universal. Yeah. I got to go there soon. So, um, But so anyway. Dude, speaking, I, speaking of Universal, I'll have to tell you about a way for you to go all access with no lines, unlimited food. You may know about it based on your reaction. No. Uh, and dude, you understand. literally walk up to the stand. They hand you the food. And you just you just pick it and you don't have to pay or anything. Every single stand, literally, there's like 200 people in the entire park. I, I can't tell you on here, but I'll tell you after. And it's the same cost. It's only fifty dollars more than a regular ticket. Okay, I'm yeah. all about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, so I'm like seeing what comes out throughout the year, and I'm super excited for April because, like I said, that's um, that's Mario and Demon Slayer is coming out with a new season. It's one of the hottest animes. Because of all these drinks, I have become an anime nerd. <laughs> like, I had never watched anime, you know, unless you count Pokemon. And now I have, like, every time I'm on the treadmill, I try and watch an episode of a new anime that's coming out. Mm. Um, just to get a, like, feel of the characters and try and figure out uh, what's going on. And not be fake making these anime drinks. Um, so I research throughout the whole year. I find out what's going to be hot. And I plan eight to ten drinks. And... From there, I usually want to plan out, I get ideas, right, for all those different themes that are going to be out throughout the year. But I don't necessarily create the drink yet. I just have a general idea of what I want to do. And then, let's say it's about to be, or it's about to be April, I'm going to start getting those recipes together. So I have it listed. I want to make Donkey Kong. I want to make Wario. I want to make Mario. But I don't really know how I'm going to do that until the month comes. And then I start try I start writing down what I want to try, make sure I have all the ingredients readily available, and then I start filming. So today I plan to make a Mario and Luigi style Long Island drink. And I'm like, this is gonna be super easy. I bought all the monster I needed, all the sour mix, all the alcohol. I'm ready to go. And it's just not floating how I wanted it to. I wanted this to be like distinctly blue on the bottom, red on top, green on top for Luigi, blue on the bottom. And I poured it up and it sucked. <laughs> uh, like Mario turned purple. Luigi just looked blue. And I'm like, shit, like, what am I going to do? But I have like backup ideas. And so I'm able to, I have enough agree- ingredients because I expect to mess up that I'm ready to go. And I, I make it work and I still got what I wanted eventually. 
<laughs> you're not just like a, a content creator. You're almost like a chemist, like coming no, into the kitchen. Honestly, it's crazy because especially with the density, like that is so important. Um, people don't realize they like a lot of times at home, people are like, I can't I can't make this drink. I can't get the layers right. This, this and that. And then my first question is always, well, did you have any ice in it to start? And you like ice keeps drinks separated. But most most important is density. So if you have something really sugary, it's always going to sink to the bottom. And that's the best way to create layers. Mm. So, OK, so you f- shoot the video. Now, once the, let's say you in one day, you'll mi- you'll shoot how many videos? Um, a maximum of probably 40. Oh, is it all? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I, I kind of changed it a little bit. I work a little bit harder on my setup now. Um, when I was just filming them on my little bar, uh, whatever you want to call it, bar setup, um, I, I wouldn't worry about the background at all. It was just I had the bottles there, had the drink. I would go through at least 60. I was wow. ready to go. And I was more paranoid about it um, then. Like, I was super into, like, the sound of, like, the liquor pouring out of the bottle. So (laughs) my AC would be running in the summertime. And so what I would do is I'd get ready for one day of filming, turn off the AC so that it wasn't buzzing um, while I was recording. And it would get to, like, 90 degrees in my apartment. I'm just shuffling through drinks all day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that's when I was a little chunkier, so <laughs> it was a sight to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's crazy. Wow. So if you can create that much content, why don't you just post like 10 times a day? I I honestly think it's kind of overwhelming as much as I do post right now. Um, I, I could post more, but I just don't think the average person wants to see even their favorite person more than three times a day. Mm. Realistically, I think... Instagram, they just release new guidelines for what they want to see from creators in uh, going forward. And they ask for twice a day. And a lot of people are upset. And I'm like, well, I got three times. So <laughs> I'm good. Oh, minimum twice a day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I I do think it could be more. But realistically, I just don't think it needs to be more. Um, okay. So how do you handle post-production? If you got 40 videos you created today, for example, what happens after you shoot it? All right. So... Th- First thing I do is I chop all the videos up and I get them. I, I like pre-edit them, if that makes sense. Um, I chop everything up so that the files are much smaller. I get rid of, you know, the time it takes me to like run to the fridge and grab an ingredient. Um, so by the time I chop these all up and before I color correct them, they're like 30 seconds instead of being, you know, five minutes. So I chop everything up. I color correct it. And then I do the final edits. And then I do a voiceover as well. And yeah, then I start getting ready to schedule things. Are you doing anything, uh, everything from your phone or using like Adobe or I After like Effects? Premiere. Okay, you're using yeah. Adobe Premiere? Yeah. Um, do you have uh, like presets you're using for color grading or are you? No, I thought about it, um, but all the colors on the drinks are so different. There's not even really a basic starting point. Because so you'll just manually adjust the yeah. color until you like it? But I, yeah, I, I run through it now, so we're good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I change my backlighting a lot. Like, you know, if it's a Pokemon drink and the Pokemon's red, I usually do a, a red backdrop. And then if it's blue, I do a blue backdrop. So it, it does have to change. And then, of course, the drink in the foreground, it does change colors too. So it's not worth having the preset in my opinion. mm I mean, it could be. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on that, like you're you've developed a lot. It sounds like you're constantly evolving. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like just like two to three years ago, what you're just a guy with a phone. Yeah. <laughs> so for someone who's just starting out, maybe they're like new and they want to create content. They have no idea what color correcting even is. Right. Like what's the starting point in today's day and age? Unfortunately, you just have to record. Like, it doesn't matter how shitty you think that video is. Post it. And if if you have a good base, people will be there. Mm. Like, if anything, you'll get engagement because people are like, oh, I want to see this better from you. Like, I want to see you add more audio or get a better song, do a voiceover. They'll tell you what they want to see if you have a good base. Um, honestly, you just have to listen to what people want. Wow. So then... Do you think it's possible to grow today or do you think that it's social media is saturated? 
Um, I think it's saturated, but at the end of the day, if you have something interesting, people are going to want to see it. It doesn't really matter how many people you have to climb over to get there. If you're interesting, you're going to be there. <laughs> um, is it better than bartending? <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I, I honestly, I don't know. And I would love to have a spot where I could have people come visit and ask for drinks. But I, if people weren't coming to see me and I was just a regular bartender, no, I do not ever want to go back. Mm. <laughs> I'd like to be, um, one of my friends called it star tending. Oh, cool. And she's like, yeah, well, let's just have you like bartend like once a week or something or not even like once a month and have people come out. And I'd like, I'm like, that would be fun. Um, but I don't think I could like go and grind it out ever again. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing uh, to monetize your audience? We talked a bit about brand deals. You talked a bit about creator funds. What's the whole package of monetization look like? Mostly brand deals and creator fund for me. I really, as much as I would love to make money off my audience, I don't really have a product right now that I feel that wouldn't be like, like so many people love to just like throw out merch and put a t- Put a time limit on it like hey we're gonna stop selling this in 24 hours so that people like think oh my gosh i only have 24 hours and they buy it and it's actually like worth nothing and like it doesn't really provide value like yes they are supporting their favorite creator but i really haven't decided a way to make money off my audience directly at the moment so what what are you doing then how do you, this is your full-time thing or are you you working other stuff like what um like oh so i would say 75% of my income is from brand deals and the creator fund. And then the other 25% is like helping out another, another, um, like I have a client that I do their social media for. They're like a club crawl company. Um, and so I help out with, with, the, with what they do. So with that, then do you think that there's like an algorithmic secret like if you were to <laughs> drop everything you had today, like you started with literally nothing, do you think that you could reinvent it? I think I definitely could. Um, I think especially, it, you know, if, if it were up to me, I would love to go back and, and redo it because I know all of what I know now, I would have, I feel like I could have even capitalized more on what I had, but I still think by like the same flip of the coin, I still have what I have now and I'm, capitalizing on it so i think i don't know that, that's a tough question <laughs> i definitely think i could rise at the ranks again i don't think it'd be difficult at all mm. so there there is it's more knowledge and like actually like there's a, some kind of formula for it yeah you definitely you, you have to like polish your content to where it needs to be but that's just stuff you're gonna learn as you go through it there, there's no way to know Everything like I just saw, you know, a podcast of Mr. Beast and he's talking about like I thought my first 500 videos were great. And I also I always think like today I'm sure that it's the best content I've ever filmed. And then a week from now, I'm like, why did I do that? And so I think his advice was great. Improve like one thing in every video. And that's how you that's how you make it. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, I did see him talk about that on like one of the podcasts. He, yeah. just, he was literally just like. Um, just, you know, if you make a thousand videos, you improve one thing every single video, like by the end of it, the video is going to be like, I I think it's, it sounds really simple because it is really simple. If there's one thing on your video that you can improve, you know, just improve one thing. Don't say like, oh, I could use better lighting. I could have, you know, had the audio better. I could have made a cooler drink. Okay. Well in your next video, either make a cooler drink, work on the audio, just, just do one thing at a time. Because it is overwhelming to look at it and say, I could be doing all these things better. One thing at a time and you'll be there before you know it. Dude, I love that. The thing that's interesting is in the creator realm, people come and go. Like there was yeah. there was one girl, um, I'll just fucking I'll just say it, Paradise Bartender. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, she she was like at like I think a million when you were just getting getting started. Yeah. And what's crazy is now like she's around the same, but her views have tanked. She rarely posts. Like what, what's the difference between you? Like you've been reinventing yourself, dude, your Instagram blew up in the last 12 months. Like what's the difference between a creator that can stand the test of time versus someone who just falls off? I think there's a couple factors that go into it. Um, and it is kind of like that whole capitalizing on your audience and like knowing what they want. Um, 
I, I follow so many of my competitors, everyone in this space so closely, especially when someone's blowing up. I want to see what they're doing and why it's working. And so, of course, I followed her content so well, but at the end of the day, there wasn't a lot of substance there. There wasn't something that she was really teaching people. She was making these super fun drinks in a time when people weren't happy. And then as life kind of like started getting better, you know, COVID was, you know, declining. People weren't just sitting at home looking for joy. She didn't really reinvent herself at all. She didn't move with the times. And if you look at like my content from, you know, three years ago now, which is wild to say, it's not unrecognizable, but you can see like how much work I've put into making it better. Whereas there's other creators, you see that they've been trying to do just the same thing again and again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I am impressed. Like, uh, you know, sometimes just the way the algorithm works, you'll pop off the feed. I'll, I won't see you. Like I'm not <laughs> going to your page to see your content. Sometimes I'll, I will, like I'll think about you, but then when your stuff pops up, dude, I'll, then I'll look at your page and I'll like go on like a, you know, especially now your content's so, um, like, um, I don't know what the word is. Like people, some people would say like ASMR, that's not exactly it, but it's like, um, it's like aesthetically pleasing and just very easy, very easy to consume. Yeah. Like you, you could get, I could see like how it's, I think it's very easy to binge. I see a mm -hmm. lot of times when I've, the longest I've seen is someone was liking my videos for four <laughs> hours <laughs> and what's crazy to think is that i've recorded that much content but it's cool to see that like someone like sat there and they would watch each video like it move on to the next one and they weren't just liking every video like based on like the feedback i could see coming back i was just like wow like that is <laughs> so cool but so insane and that happens like pretty often that someone's just binging my content for that day mm. yeah interesting <laughs> like 12 hours later they're just like still watching yeah, i was stuff. playing uh, like minecraft or something with my friends and i'm like man this girl's been liking my videos for like an hour and so I, they, we were like laughing about it and then we were like still playing and i'm like i wonder if she's still and like still going still going and then finally after like four hours she was <laughs> this user was done liking my videos <laughs> they didn't even get to the end which is the crazy part hmm. do you know where they got to uh, it, they were in 2020. I know wow. they're getting close and I'm like, damn, they're, they're like the, the content's getting worse. Like they're over <laughs> Prob <it. laughs> probably honestly, <laughs> yeah, like slowly it's getting there. Like this guy actually sucks. <laughs> it, it's so funny because like I was saying, I always think my content's top notch, but I remember in 2020, I was just like riding a wave. I was killing it for months and months and months. And then in like, I want to say October just, or eh, probably September, somewhere around there, it just kind of like dropped off. And I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, my videos are so good. I'm putting great shit out there. People just, they just don't want to see it. TikTok doesn't like me right now. You know, blaming it on whatever it is, the algorithm, people. Because it's not me. I'm not the problem. Um, and then looking <laughs> back on it, like, two months later, I'm like, damn. Yeah, that was, I was just posting trash content. Like, I wasn't doing my best. Hmm. I was pushing out videos that I didn't even believe in. I just thought would get views. And, Yeah. It, it's definitely like a lesson because you you cannot blame the algorithm. Yes, sometimes it's not going to be your best friend, but at the at the core, if you post something good, it's going to get the content and the views, and people are going to like it. Wow, that's interesting. That's a big shift to take. It's like looking at the yeah. mirror and being like, "Oh, it's actually me. It's actually my fault." Yeah, it's it's tough because it it's so easy to just say, "Oh, views are down for the month. Like that's why." Mm. No, that's not why someone's getting those views. It's not that your views are gone. People are still online. Yeah, maybe a fraction less, but those views are just somewhere else. There's a guy in the, in like the finance YouTuber space named Meet Kevin. And I was watching a video of his and he was uh, basically talking about cancel culture. And he was saying how people get canceled, but he was saying like, people don't actually get canceled. No. What happens is they cancel themselves because they lose the energy and the excitement and enthusiasm that made them entertaining to watch. Honestly. This guy should be should have been canceled by now. He's been through like like multiple cycles of like what the yeah. heck, but um, he stays alive. I also I I think, I mean, <laughs> cancel culture is so funny. But unless you're actually a terrible person, you know, people will always overreact about something. But unless you're truly a terrible person, there is no cancel culture. It's just if you let let it happen. You know, like if you. You know, you're upset about your content and people are berating you. It's easy to like kind of back off and disappear. Mm. But 
if you're actually killing it, you're having a good time and what you did wasn't that bad, you're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, I think just sticking with like creating content, maintaining the energy, like pushing mm-hmm. through it. Because the thing is, is no matter how serious something is, the m- most people won't even know about it. That And most people are smart enough to understand the situation. So many people online you know that are it's like the they they say chronically online so many people are chronically online and they like find these problems that aren't real but those people aren't they weren't consuming your content to begin with and they're not a view that you're losing or gaining Mm. we uh we talked a lot about like kind of the types of content um a lot of it has been focused on short form content Mm -hmm. um by the way what is your most like viewed or most viral piece of content my most viral piece of content um was probably those those nudes you took right that went (laughs) (laughs) i wish and if i was making money on OnlyFans too (laughs) (laughs) um i want to say it's probably nuka cola was it those ones yeah uh, yeah i want to say it's it's the fallout series that's what's brought in the most both money and views to my page. Actually, uh, it was so cool. I think I think I was actually telling you about it because um, it it was just happening. But Bethesda actually reached out to me to um, to promote one of their video games because they liked what I was doing. So that was really cool. And that's like that's the company that makes Fallout. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so did you end big. up doing it? Yeah. What was the what was the like what did you do for them? Um, so they had a new DLC coming out, um, for their like fallout 76 and I just made a new drink or made a drink based on the new DLC and then another one based on the like regular base game. Mm. It was really cool. That's cool. So, uh, how does long form content fall into the game for you? And also like, how do you perceive it in the world of content right now? Um, I think long form content. Long form content is legit. Like that's that's obviously the holy grail. That's what everyone wants, and it's a tough thing to do because it it sounds overwhelming. Like you have to capture someone for you know ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. But if you're doing something interesting, it's not going to be that hard. It's just all about tweaking it once you have your idea of what you want to do. I think. So do you make long form content here and there? Nothing consistent. I think. For my, for me, the excuse I had for the longest time was that like, I don't, I don't look good. I don't, I don't want to do it yet. And then when you started looking that, good <laughs> after that, it was like, I don't have the right mic. And then I got the right mic and then I'm like, well, my lighting's not there. And now my lighting is there. Um, so now it's more about, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a planner. So I want to have, I want to make sure that I can pump out at least one long form video a week and be consistent so at the moment i'm looking at like the best series i've ever done and i'm gonna make those all into like one one baked video of long form content with me and my lovely face (laughs) i I like it (laughs) yeah and i i want to talk more about um like how i come up with the ideas because in short form content i don't really get the chance to try the drink i don't really have a chance to explain which I do in the comments. You'll see me fighting with everyone. They're like, how does this have to do with this? And I'm like, either A, it doesn't, or B, this is exactly why it has to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to be able to talk about that more, and I think long-form content is the way to do it. What's interesting is the, like, I feel like in, like right now, everyone wants to be a creator. Yeah. It's like the be, the creator creator economy, it's like, it's like the pinnacle of jobs. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so funny because of course being a TikToker, I, I consume TikTok content. I'm on there way more than I need to be. And it it I love seeing videos where people are complaining about views because I end up watching them because I want to see what they have to say about it. And all the comments are like, yeah, my views are down, my views are down. And I, I'll go check on like their profiles and I'm like, it's all these like like micro influencers, if you will, like five hundred 500 followers and saying my views are down and i'm like <laughs> what views <laughs> where were they like not, not to you know discourage anyone but it's like if they weren't there in the first place you gotta you gotta either shift it or figure out what you want to do you can't just be a creator you, you have to do something <laughs> <laughs> would you say that you could look at those pages and like pinpoint the things they're doing wrong 90 percent of the time yeah i think the most important thing that a lot of people underrate is the hook you have to have a good hook like why am i watching this video Mm. and so many people i mean myself included 
I'll start a video off where I just like I, you just want to kind of talk to someone, and that's not really how it works. Like you gotta you gotta grab them. You gotta like essentially grab them, shake them. This is why you're gonna watch my video. What what's an example of one that you 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 do? For me, I usually like bait people into the video. Like I I I'll say something like blasphemous, like this is why you're doing this wrong, or this is why this is the best drink ever. And so many people they're like, well, this isn't gonna be the best drink. They gotta watch it. And then they, you know, comment, this drink sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how you're thinking about the mechanics of content. And I I, I know they're, like the system's there, but the, you're, you're thinking of it so, like, tactically yeah. that, <laughs> that there's a reason for your success with it and why you've got, been able to get there. Yeah, it's definitely I, – I, when I see, like, a viral video, I want to know why. And like I think about it in every way that I can. I see what other people are saying about it, because so many people are like, "Well, this content sucks. That's why. I, like, I don't get why it's viral." And I'm like, "There's a reason. You just have to find it." Mm. Um, like just yesterday, I, I was watching a video of another bartender. They're they're upset that this old fashioned video had 15 million views. And they're like, "It's a terrible old fashioned. It doesn't deserve it." And I'm like, "That's exactly why it got that many views. He recorded it so well. It looks like it's in like 4K." And he put like one little ice cube in it and said the ice was optional. And in an old fashioned, it's really not. And that's what the comments are. They're like, that's way too strong. There's not enough ice. So other people are like, there's too much ice. It's like they got the algorithm. They got everyone commenting. They got the casual people watching because it's beautiful. They just checked all the boxes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'll notice that like I'll go to the comments when there's something that for me is like, like kind of triggered me a little bit and I want to see like, I want to be validated. Yeah, like, exactly. is there, does anyone else feel this way? And I see it. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm not the only one. Right. And then it, and they're all just going back and forth with each other. Cause you can see the same comments so many times. It's not even that people, they don't even want to argue it. They just want to make sure that like they're getting it out there, that that's how they felt out about the video. Not that they're the first person to feel it. That's just, they want to share how that's how they felt. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times it's been said. Are you still? Do you see everything that comes through? Like, um, not not so much anymore. I finally like, I just mute TikTok throughout the day. I really, I I can't keep up with it. it it's not good for you, because <laughs> like I was saying, it's it's like repetitive comments. It's I I'm probably missing like some nice people here and there. But if a video is new. Um, I try and like remember what I so I schedule everything now, um, which has been a game changer. Uh, so you're you're not actually po- you're not you're not no one's hitting a button to say yeah. go live. Yeah. Um, okay. And on TikTok, you have to do that through desktop, right? Yeah. So what changed for me was grabbing audio ahead of time so that I could schedule it because on TikTok you can't pick an audio through the desktop. So now I have everything baked into one video. And I'm using like my original audio. Oh, oh, so you so you download someone else's audio, you mm-hmm. just keep it, and you don't notice any difference in your views. No. So, because I I know sometimes people have talked about like, well, if you schedule it, it might get throttled. Yeah, I've I've heard that, and as far as I can tell, I don't believe that to be true. I know we, it it's so frustrating because obviously we will never get the answers from these social media companies like instagram says they they came out and actually addressed like shadow bans and they said they don't do it and which there's like no way <laughs> yeah there's no way that like certain content like it's it's there's no way <laughs> so we'll never get like the answer on scheduling content like does it it's hard to say like is my video bad or do i want to blame it on something else the way i see it is even if a video that I, I'm so certain was going to be great, if, I, if I'm that confident, I'll, I'll consider resharing it at a later date. And if it still tanks, I, like, I have to own it, own it that that was mine. Mm. Um, but like 90% of the time, I, I just don't. I think it's the content. I don't think they're throttling it because you scheduled it. Why do they have the option then? Yeah, true. Uh, have you ever tried using like a third-party posting app, like a... Um, yeah, I tried out like, um, it was called Metricool. It was nice, except you, if you're a creator account, you couldn't schedule on TikTok and Instagram, but a business account can, which I thought was bizarre. And then they take with a business account, they limit the amount of sounds you can use. And like, there's, yeah. there's all these other things. Um, we do post, so we do post on, 
uh, all platforms. Uh, up until recently, we were using TikTok's native desktop scheduling thing. Mm-hmm. But just to keep it easy, we put it all into one. We use something called Sprout Social. It's crazy yeah. expensive. It doesn't make sense unless you have like <laughs> a lot of accounts and client accounts. Mm-hmm. But YouTube, oh my gosh, does it get throttled? Our shorts. Yeah. If we if we're posting shorts on YouTube, a week we literally we split tested a week of posting on on uh, through a third party app and a week of scheduling directly, and the week of of scheduling from a separate app, most videos will get one view to zero views on new channels, and, uh, whereas scheduling directly you'll get. You know, some with a couple, some with hundreds, and a couple videos to get a few thousand, and the the difference is like is like nothing. So, I did, like I said, I briefly used that third party scheduling app, and you know, I think like looking back, I could have noticed like a a slight drop off for different videos, but I used it so sparingly because I do I do think if you're scheduling it through the native app, that's so much better. Um, so unfortunately, when I do schedule content, I'll like, you know, sit back for like three, four hours and I probably only schedule at max like 10 days at a time because TikTok only lets you schedule that many days out or maybe it's 14. Um, so I just sit there and I'll go from like TikTok's page to Pinterest. I actually post on there too. Oh, how's that going? I have like 300 followers. So <laughs> hmm. I have like 40,000 monthly views, but I don't know. I'm. I'm already like shelling all this content out. Might as well throw it on another app, I guess. Yeah, no, that's cool. Forty thousand monthly. I mean, that's decent. Yeah, I mean, it's something. And I think the the buying behavior of Pinterest people, I think it's a little bit different than a regular social app. Yeah, it's a lot better um, for like blogs too. Um, people love like backlinks on Pinterest are huge. So. Hmm. And then for posting on Facebook and Instagram, you just use Meta Business Suite, or do you? Yeah, so I use the Meta Business Suite for Facebook, but then I'll schedule from my phone for Instagram. Okay, and you can do that now? Yeah. For Facebook, are you seeing, I'm hearing a lot of rave about Facebook's re-energizing its reels. Um, Not personally. I've had some decent content this year, but... What do you think? You, how many followers do you have on Facebook? I have like eleven thousand. Okay, yeah, yeah I think so it's okay for considering how much you have on other platforms, though. It's like yeah, I would say Facebook is like the prime. Like they are the top of the top. Like if you're not getting engagement, they don't care if you you can have a video. It's not going to happen. But with like zero likes, everyone hates it. But you will get more comments on a Facebook video than on any other platform. Hmm. Facebook is definitely the most opinionated <laughs> social media. Because it's just grannies. Literally. <laughs> it's just people who want to argue. <laughs> uh, cool, man. I got two questions left for you. One, right. uh, um, why uh, Sin City Bartender? I This isn't a loaded question. <laughs> I literally I literally don't. I actually forget the origin of it. Um, yeah. I mean, you you came to me. You're like, let's 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 film some videos. And I'm like, I don't like. I don't like filming the content. Like I, I don't want to make a video <laughs> and you're like, it's no, like you do cool stuff. Like let's, let's film it. And so we did. And you were like, Sin City Bartender is such a good name. I'm like, there's no way that's not taken. And you're like, it's not taken. I'm like, there's no way. Like I genuinely, oh, it was like, it was into like posting like our third video, uh, our second video, I think blew up. And I had asked like a hundred times. I'm like, so like, are you paying to like promote this? Like, <laughs> I don't really understand TikTok. Like, I, there is no part of me that thought it was real because I had such a great name. I was getting views. The content was cool, but like, I was like, so so what is this? It's all just you own this app at this point. Like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, we we didn't. I didn't really want to go into the, the origin story <laughs> um, because, dude, I really do see like you create it's you created it. Like I, we, I, 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 I needed the push. Like I, there's no way that I was ever going to pick up a camera because that's not me. But we sat there, we made, I think like it was a, there was like what it was like a, a the beer thing. The beer. It was the first video. And yeah. then we did like a Rona inspired thing. Oh yeah. I had to, I had to put that on private <laughs> <laughs> after people were getting so upset. I'm like, yeah, we're just gonna. And then, it. yeah. And then it was like crazy though. The, we we're like, the, the first yeah, video dude, the rainbow got shots. like, <laughs> yeah, the rainbow shots got like a hundred thousand or something. And it's so funny because my sister, I don't know if you remember, she was there while we were filming and kept screwing up. Was she, was she trying to pour? 
No, no, she was just chilling on the couch, like watching us screw oh, up. Oh, we yeah, we yeah, because like the <laughs> shots kept not coming out right. Yeah. So we like kind of edited it so they looked more like yeah. yeah. And I we probably filmed like seven times. I think I like ran out of like a whole gallon of orange juice. I'm like fuck, like, we're <laughs> running out. Um, and then we finally got one that was close enough where I the pour was okay, and then we just kind of added some better colors after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was cool. And, and uh, actually, in my opinion, like looking back changing those colors is part of the reason we did we did a lot of stuff right to go viral because the video wasn't totally true and that's what people love to fight about yeah they got triggered by it right yeah because we poured when we were pouring i was just showing like you're dumping this shit into the shaker which is not how it works you have to layer it (laughs) like that's not possible when i did it it comes out this way that way and i'm like oh shit like hey it still tasted good (laughs) i hope (laughs) Uh, yeah how did we pour the colors we just uh no so eventually we did layer it right um i just had a super shitty shaker at the time so like it wasn't it wasn't like your standard i think what i had a cobbler instead of a boston shaker and so it had to like just pour a little bit differently and it was so frustrating to do but then we finally got it close enough and then after we just added better colors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's cool, man. All right, one last question. Um, what I do on the show is the previous guest wrote a question for you. Oh, they, they didn't know who you were, and then you're gonna answer it, and then you'll write one for the next guest. Cool. So. All right, so dude, why don't you read it out loud? Yeah. All right. If you had to commit financial fraud, what would you do, and how would you get away with it? Well, shit. Thanks, Spencer. Um, yeah, Spencer, <laughs> damn. Um, financial fraud. <laughs> shit. Um, hmm. How, what would I do? Um, you know, I'm an influencer, so I, there's probably something I could do with that. Um, hype a whole bunch of people up on like an NFT or something and then just scam them all. <laughs> Not that I would do that. C- but, um, coming in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's the, the easiest one influencers are usually schemers so <laughs> <laughs> cool man dude well thanks for having us here um even though you won't see it when they message you uh, how can people connect with you i i actually reply to every instagram dm unless it's something weird <laughs> <laughs> so no dps no dps please wow. i and i hate it because instagram they they put it on the images this is uh concealed for your protection I'm like but what is it <laughs> yeah so then you go through anyways and you're like oh can i'm not again it? can you blur it a little less like just enough <laughs> <laughs> just on, skin on, colored blurring only on a sidebar <laughs> i had this guy so upset one time he was fighting with me in the comments and i i said something i was just like bro it's, it's just not that serious like whatever the drink was i don't know what you're arguing about he messages me dick pics. <laughs> I was like, bro, like, what was your goal here? Like, you have these saved on your phone? And then he blocked me. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> uh, cool, man, dude. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Sin- at Sin City Bartender. Yes, sir. Or the Sin City Bartender on some socials. But you type Sin City, I'm coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, dude. This is fun. Absolutely.